Hi YouTube, and this is JTrain997, and I'm back this time with a figure I am very excited for. The DC Universe Classics Wave 16 Figure 1 Jonah Hex. And if you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you know that above all, Jonah Hex is my favorite comic character. Um, so when I heard DC Universe was making one, I absolutely flipped. Um, so I just got all of Wave 16 in the mail today, and of course we're starting with this guy. Um, note though, if you've seen me review the Green Lantern Classics already, you know the boxes were different. I assumed it was just because the line was trying to differentiate itself from DC Universe. But as you can see, DC Universe has now changed its box to the same style as Green Lantern Classics, so I guess it's just the, the look, the overall both toy lines from Mattel are going to take. Now, on to Jonah Hex. As you can see here in packaging, he's got his hat on, which I don't think is removable. He comes with a sawed-off shotgun and one revolver. And he's also got this bandolier of ammo on his chest, which is unfortunate. Um, well, it's not unfortunate, it's just that's strange they put that there. Jonah Hex didn't have a bandolier constantly. But a very nice-looking figure. Um, he comes with the leg of Bane, as you can see there. Instead of a symbol, he's got two six guns crossed. Onto the back of the packaging here, you can see the other characters in the way, which were himself, the Creeper, the classic costume Riddler, the um, new version of Robin, Mercury, and Az um, the Azrael Batman. And over here you have a picture of Bane when he's finished. And Jonah Hex's read-up says, As a child, Jonah Hex was sold by his father to an Apache chieftain and trained in the Apache ways of war. When the chief's son challenged Jonah to a ritual tomahawk duel, Jonah broke the rules and the tribe punished him by searing his face with a red-hot tomahawk. Cast out, hideously scarred, and utterly alone, Hex rode west to make a living as the, a bounty hunter. He became a fugitive's worst nightmare. And man, that is the cliff notes of the cliff notes of the story about John Hex. I'm not going to bore you with the entire story because you can always go to Wikipedia, but a couple of quick notes about this. Um, his dad sold him into slavery for safe passage through, or I think it was a pile of beaver skins, depending on what story you're reading. Um, Jonah saved the chief from a puma, or a, yeah, a puma, and that, for that reason he was made the chief's honorary son. The chief's actual son, Noah Tante, um, hated Jonah for that, so he got him captured on a raid. Anyways, Jonah eventually makes his way into and ends up fighting in the war, comes back, and um, challenges Noah Tante in a tomahawk battle. Where it's a sacred battle, you can only use tomahawks, but Noah Tante cheats, sabotages Jonah's tomahawk so it'll break, and Jonah uses his knife to defend himself. Since he saved the chief's life, the chief won't kill him and just gives him the mark of the demon, which is the tomahawk against the face. But his stats, first appearance, All-Star Western Volume 2, number 10, March 1972, real name, Jonah Hex, or Jonah Woodson Hex, Occupation Bounty Hunter, Base of Operations, The Old West, Special Abilities, Top physical condition with amazing tracking skills and the ability to live off the land. Excellent marksman with any firearm. At least they got his special abilities right. So that being said, couldn't be more excited for this bad boy. Let's pull him out of the packaging. And here we have Jonah Hex out of packaging. Um, here's Bane's leg. I was a little worried in the packaging it looked a little small. So I was like, oh, maybe they made Bane a standard size figure. But as you can see by Jonah, a very massive leg. Going to be a great sized figure. And here we have Jonah Hex. Um, as you can see, I've got him in a pretty nice pose here. He actually has a space in the back of his bandolier for the sawed off. Um, unfortunately, while I plan to just take the bandolier off or drop it around his waist like an extra ammo belt, um, it is permanently attached. Um, it seems like if you wanted to rip it off, you could, but I mean, like on the back here, there's some space where it's clearly not attached, but on the front here, I mean, it ain't going anywhere. So that's unfortunate. Um... But not the end of the world. I was just really hoping it would be removable. As you can see, they've got the two feathers hanging off the edge here. Um, his six gun came a little warped in the packaging. And I've got to say, after seeing them do um, more realistic guns, like when they made the Vigilante figure back in Wave 8, I think it was, I was a little disappointed because um, Jonah Hex is very avid in the comic that he prefers Colt Dragoons. And he always uses two, so... Kind of disappointed we only got one, but oh well. We'll slip that in his holster. I am really going to be hard on this guy because I'm a big Hex fan. Um, it goes well enough in his holster. Kind of got to put a little extra force in there. At least I think it does. Yeah, the gun is an incredibly tough plastic, so it feels like the more I try to put it in the holster, the more it's bending. Um, 
also, if you're a diehard Hex fan like me, you know the Hex has one holster, and he puts another gun tucked into his gun belt. Um, this is also permanently sculpted on. There's no space, even if because I was thinking, oh, I'll just buy another, stick the gun in there. The belt is sculpted on. The sawed-off, which is back here, actually has some much nicer detail than the standard six-gun. You can see they've got the, with the exception of the word China, it's got a very nice um, wood grain stock detail, some very nice silver. Um, I wish they would have put some black at the end of this barrel, make it look more like an actual gun, but oh well. Um, this fits in his hand decently, although, as you can see, they don't really have it sculpted where you can have him holding the trigger guard, but it looks okay in his hand. Ooh, guess I better pan out for that. Yeah. So you can put it in this hand or this one. It looks okay. I'll probably end up keeping it in his bandolier. Also, the six gun can fit in either hand pretty decently. And you can actually get the... If you try hard enough, you can get his fingers to go through the trigger guard on the six gun. So, pulling that out. And we'll get him stood up and get a look at where this figure shines, which, surprisingly enough, is his detail. Which... You can see they've got a very nice job. They've done a very nice job on the hat. Getting the hat band in there. They've got the dual cavalry sabers up there. Very nice. And what I'm especially impressed with, which is the facial scar. Oh, I lost focus. Just a gruesome job. Really nice. Um, And his uniform is also very nice. You can see that there's lots of tears. It's kind of dirty, like he's been in a fight. Of course, he's got the um, Confederate States of America buckle. The dirt continues on down, even on his jeans. You can see his spurs. And even though I'm not crazy about the bandolier, there is a lot of nice details. I've already mentioned the feathers, which are okay. Um, so overall, the bandolier is growing on me. I just wish they would have maybe made it a variant, which I know we're lucky enough to have gotten a one Jonah Hex at all. But his articulation, his head goes up and down, does a full 360. His arms are pretty stiff. They can only go out to about here. They do a full 360, though. Spin at the bicep, bend at the elbow, and spin at his hand. Um, of course, he has no admin movement, seeing as they've sacrificed that joint to give him his coat. There's some very slight... Well, there he goes. You can see he does a full 360 at the torso. The same for both arms. Um, his legs are a little hindered by his um, Confederate jacket, but... They go back, forward, and out, just not quite as much as a normal DC Universe. Turn at the quadricep, then the knee, and have an ankle joint. Also, I... No, they don't turn at the boot. So, this Jonah Hex is a solid figure. Um, They did give up a little bit of the articulation, and I wish they would have gone with a two six guns and better ones. But um, other than that, he is a solid figure. Let's get his gun in here. Um, I'd say if you're a fan, you won't be disappointed. Um, he's not the most amazing figure in the world, but he is still solid. And once again, my biggest gripes really come from the guns. Gotta wonder if they'll ever do one of the futuristic Hex figures. I was wondering if they ever did one, if they'd make that the variant. But, oh well. So, we'll get Jonah standing up here. We'll actually have a comparison of the other two Jonah Hex figures they released, which were the DC Direct one. As you can see here, the only other one they made from the actual comics. Let's get Jonah in a better stance here. He doesn't want to stand in that crouch. Um, side note real quick, I mentioned it in the review. This is not the actual base that came with Jonah Hex. It came with a showcase base, which I hated, so I swapped it out from... I think this came with, like, from a McFarlane Bash the Stampede figure. Yeah, great figure, great base to pick up if you want a Jonah Hex base, um... Because I know the original base, I've lost the pieces, had like a cat disc back here with a wanted poster on it. Wish I still had that. But anyway, um, as you can see, they're both solid figures. John has kind of got his hat down. Um, they definitely went with a more severe face scar on this figure, which I like. And um, they also dirtied up his uniform quite a bit, which I also like. Over here, I like his gun belt much better and the fact that they gave him a bandolier and much better pistols. I'll probably have to say these figures are both solid. They're both great and both must-haves if you're a Jonah Hex fan. Now, that being said, we'll push this bad boy off to the back here and to get the most recent one out here besides this guy, which was the NECA movie Jonah Hex. 
Um, as always, NECA does an amazing job of detail. Even though that movie flopped, um, the figure is still probably the best thing that came out of it. Amazing job. Really gets Josh Brolin. Some great detail. Some great accessories. Um, I've got to say, they're both... I mean, all of, none of these are really bad figures. I've got to say, if you're a Jonah Hex fan, you really need to get all of these guys. Um, and it's really hard to pick a best one, because each one has something going for it. Although I did just knock this one's guns out of his hand. And his hat off his head. That's another thing. I would have liked to have seen him, this Jonah's hat removable. I mean, that's not terribly hard to do. Although this one... That's actually my fault. Over time, I've just moved him around and pressed his hat down and posed him so many different ways. His hat has come loose off the top of his head. Which usually isn't a problem for me because he sits in his display. Just fine. So once again, this is J-Train 997. The DC Universe Classics Wave 16 is starting to hit stores sparsely now. Um, if you're a Jonah Hex fan, you won't be disappointed, although he is does need a few touch-ups before he could have been called a perfect figure. But he's still a must-own in my book, and I'll see you soon, YouTube.